You guys, it is the fall. It is hunting season and thousands or hundreds of thousands of hunters all around this country are getting out to zero their hunting rifles after maybe a year in storage. We zero a lot of hunting rifles for the Backfire channel. And so I'm gonna give you some kind of pro tips, some of the kind of cool stuff that I've learned about how to do this without wasting too much ammo. We're gonna do a two shot zero as soon as we get on paper. Okay, that's the first tip here is what I used to do is when I was just bore sighting it, just getting on paper, I used to just come in close, 35 yards, 60 yards, just close, right? But then I realized that if I'm at 40 yards and let's say my shot went three inches high and I'm trying to get it kind of closer, then I'm not sure how many clicks it is when I'm at 40 yards because the clicks are when you're at 100. So I always come to 50 to do the bore sight because then I know I just have to do twice as many clicks as if I were at 100. Okay, so we're shooting the Bagara Premier Competition in this video. Oh, this gun is sick. I'm excited to show it to you in an upcoming video. We're gonna kind of feature this thing. But for today, we're just sighting it in so we're ready to make that, that video. So I'm gonna set this up. Now I have a bipod in the front and a sandbag in the rear. It doesn't really matter what you use, but we need something that can hold the gun steady enough that when I don't touch it, it can stay in that spot. So if you're using a lead sled or something like that, it's gonna work great. And then I'm going to take out the bolt, no bolt at all. Now I used to use like a laser bore sighter, you know, a little device you put in here, it shoots a laser through and you kind of aim to it. Those do work pretty decent, but the more experience I have doing it this way, I think I can get it accurate and it's just easier out here in the field. I'm looking through the barrel, not the scope, but the actual barrel. And I'm just trying to see that white paper in through the barrel. Okay, now I see the white of the paper through the barrel. I can't see the target, but I can just see I'm on paper right in the middle of the barrel. And then I look up now to the scope without bumping the gun and I see my reticle is off. I need to move the turret so that it points in the center of the paper at the same time that when I look through the bore, I see paper right in the center of that. We're ready to take one shot and we'll see if we're at least on paper here close. So for ear pro, I've been using these Apple or these Axel X cores. I got them a couple months ago when they launched and I, I'm, I'm never too eager about talking about EarPro because they drive me nuts because I shoot so much that I have to have some that are comfortable. And these are the best that I've ever used. They're kind of expensive, but they work so well. I like them because they, so they're active. Um, and so I can hear when Emily and I are talking but they'll also quiet down the sound of the gun. The other thing that I like about all of Axel's products is they're really good at cutting the wind. Some of them, if there's any wind, it just messes it up and it's just blow, you know, playing the sound of wind in here. Emily's, I'll model them for us, son. Yes, for sure. This is the GS Extreme that she's using that I used before these, and they really are, they're good. They're a lot less expensive, but they just have the cord around the back, so. Okay, now with any luck, we should at least be reasonably close to the target. We actually want to aim that our bullet is hitting a little bit low, maybe an inch and a half lower than the bullseye on the target, because there's a, dis dif a distance between the scope and the bore of the barrel, and at 100, we want those two to match, not necessarily here. I don't know that we're going to be that accurate, just dead center of the paper. Hey, not bad! Okay, we're just a little bit high here. And so I'm gonna come down. Now, since we're high and we wanna go an inch low, I'm gonna come down. Okay, we're bore sighted. We're, we're pretty close. Now we're gonna scoot this back to 100 yards and we're gonna do our two shot zero now that we know we're on paper. We'll set up here and we get two shots to do this. First, a warning. It's pretty unrealistic to get a two shot zero unless your rifle is super accurate. If it's not, you know, when we see where a shot lands, we can't rely that that's exactly where the scope is pointing. And so the more accurate your gun is, the quicker it is to get a zero. 
Then the other part of this is, if you're a newer shooter or something like that, it may be pretty unwise to take one shot and base anything off that. You might wanna shoot two or three shots for each step here so that you know how accurate the gun is and you can kind of correct for your own errors. Now our shot is low on the paper. And so there are two ways we can do this to correct for that second shot to try to get it right in the bullseye. The first method is kind of a little bit of a party trick. It's maybe a little bit more complicated than necessary and harder to pull off, but it's also the coolest. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna point the gun not at the bullseye this time, this time I'm gonna point the gun exactly at my previous impact, where that hole is that I just made on the paper. We should be able to make our shot. Ah! Okay, we're just off by a half an inch on our two, on our two shot zero. Very, very close. That's a pretty big win because so many people ah, will go through a box of ammo to get to that point. If you just follow those steps, you'll get there. Now, I mentioned there were two ways to do this, and that's kind of the party trick, is this don't try to bump the gun and aiming at the bullet hole thing. The problem is, as you're moving the scope, it's pretty easy to nudge the gun unless you're in a lead sled or something like that. So I use a different method that I, I think works a little bit better for me, and that is I'm just going to aim my scope right at the bullseye, and I'm going to use the little marks on my reticle if you have a scope that has, you know, all those marks in it, and it's going to, it's measuring for me how far it is off. And so I see that first shot is down about eight tenths of a mil low, one tenth right. And so if I see that, now I just dial to eight tenths, eight clicks here and one to the right. Now, this won't work unless you have a first focal plane scope. What that means is when I zoom in the scope, if the reticle is getting bigger and smaller when I zoom in, you have a first focal plane optic. And that means all those little markings on the, on the reticle are correct. And so if you have a second focal plane, this would only work at the proper magnification. Sometimes it's marked, sometimes it's maximum here. So we're roughly sighted in two shots it took us to get there once we were on paper. We've already gone through a pro tip. We already talked about our first mistake in this video. First mistake is just not doing a bore sight before flinging lead and you're gonna waste a ton of ammo. The second mistake is not thinking through your sight in distance. So you saw me sight in at 100 yards. People do different things and I'm, I wouldn't say that they're wrong either. So some people sight in at 200 yards, especially hunters do this a lot. And the reasoning that they would say is that if you sight in at 200 yards, you're kind of taking advantage of the MPBR or the max point blank range. What that means is when I shoot here, let's say we were to put a big four inch PVC pipe around my, my muzzle and we were to take that pipe out perfectly straight for 300 yards. Well, because the bullet flies so flat in the first 300 yards of its trajectory, if we had a four inch MPBR, a lot of these rifles would make it out to 300 yards without even touching the PVC pipe. And so that their thinking is, hey, if I'm not even shooting further than 300 yards, if I sight in at 100 yards, my bullet's gonna hit the pipe. If I sight in at 200 yards, we're pretty flat at the start. We might be a little bit high here, but we're still within that four inch kill zone. And that works great if that's your style of hunting. Maybe I'm too OCD about this. I think it's just that I love the precision of these rifles. I love zeroing at 100 yards and then I have my ballistics, I'm dialing anytime I need to. And then I feel like it makes the gun more versatile, that it's not just hunting, I can also take it to the range and get super precise, things like that. There's another reason why I don't use the 200 yard zero. And that's one that I showed a little bit ago in a video. Let's go look at that target. So here's 100 yards, perfect windage. And just with this little bit of breeze we have going here, now this is actually three shots. Three shots, but look, it pushed it off half of an inch. So to me, that's the core problem with the 200 yard zero is, to me, it's kind of rare that I'm shooting and there's like truly zero wind. 
there's always a little bit of something. So that's why I don't sight in at 200 is I feel like the wind could just cause an imprecise zero. But if you like the idea of not even needing to touch your scope at all, if you get a shot within 100 or 300 yards, this is what I do. When I'm walking through the woods, even though I'm zeroed at 100 yards, I can dial up to wherever I need to be that I'm now dialed to what my scope needs to be at for a 200 yard shot. And now if it's within 300, I just don't even touch the scope, but I have all the advantages of the 100 yard zero. Mistake number three is that guy up there. It is the sun. And surprisingly, it has an impact on how your scope works. So I did not know this for the longest time. And in fact, a year ago, I did a video where I talked about the fact that I, it was driving me nuts that I had this rifle that I shot all the time and it was incredibly accurate, the Sig Cross. But the problem was, it felt like every time I picked that gun up, the zero was off just like a click left, click right. And then I went to a shooting school this summer and I learned some things about how the sun impacts your scope. So let's say I'm looking at a target and it's the pre-dawn hours. There's no direct sunlight in the sky. That is when is the best time of day to zero your rifle. And if I have a rifle that I'm serious about shooting, we're doing serious long range work, I will come out before the sun is up or after the sun is down and I'll zero the rifle then. Because once the sun comes up, let's say the sun is on your left and the target is straight in front of you, the sun is gonna put your impact about one click down and to the right, just the opposite direction of where the sun is is what you're going to see in your scope. It's gonna move the reticle. It's gonna give the illusion that it's pointed low and left if the sun is high and right, or low and right if the sun is high and left. And so it's really not the best time if you wanna get a perfect zero in the middle of the day. All right, mistake number wherever we're at is chasing your tail. It's so easy to shoot one shot, adjust the scope, one shot, adjust the scope, and again, not remembering the accuracy of the rifle and your mistakes as well. So now that we're close, I'm gonna shoot a group of four here and I'm going to make my last clicks based off a group instead of an individual shot so that I know for sure that's where it's going. Let's go look at that. 0.65 on that four shot group right around there. So what I'm interested here though, is now that I've shot a group, how far is the center of that group from the bullseye? And I'd put that that we need to come eight tenths of an inch, we gotta come to the left. So if I'm on a mill scope, which this is, I'm gonna be two clicks. If I'm MOA, I'm gonna be roughly three clicks here. Now we've shot a group and we have a much better idea where we are. We're gonna do just one last thing before we wrap it up and it is the last mistake. It shouldn't be that when you undo the little screws to re-zero your turret on the scope, it really shouldn't change the where your scope is clicked to. But on a lot of scopes that I've tested, when I zero the turret so that the zero is right on the little marker, Every time I do that, it puts me off a tiny bit. And so last thing that I would say is we shot a group to make that final correction. Well, maybe we need one last final correction. We're probably gonna shoot one more group after I zero the turret and make sure we don't need any little fine tuning one way or the other. Hey, thanks everybody for joining me in a backfire video. Thanks Emily for surviving behind the camera in this heat. And we'll see you guys out in the hunting woods.